Let's see here. I'm not seeing the green thing here. Uh, let me see here. Hold on one second. Yeah, you're controlling it on that end, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's not giving me the uh, green. Oh, here we go. Here we go. There it says we're on air. Okay. Is it, is it showing on? Yeah, it says you are on air. All right. It's not showing on my end, but I, I'm gonna we're, we're, let's roll with it. So okay. Yeah, so I, what I always like to do, we got 15 minutes, so I wanted to kind of get to you know know a little bit about you, why sure. you do what you're doing with this project, uh, some information about what you know what the project entails, and mm -hmm. what you're looking for in terms of uh, of a raise for for this uh, business venture. Yeah, that's fine. So um, I primarily have worked in uh, land development and commercial development, and that's kind of my background. But in the process, I've met a lot of people. And so several years ago, I met Dr. Kevin Corbel, and he and I became close friends. And he had been working on this project. He's a, uh, a well, uh, a very well experienced heart failure specialist. He's been working in the Lafayette, Louisiana area. His his whole professional life and well established. And this is an idea that he came up just through his practice and seeing a problem that needed to be solved. And that problem was uh, there, there's, there's a demand for heart failure specialists. There's a shortage in the country. And, and right now they say that, you know, we're pushing around 2000 positions that were short for the demand for heart failure specialists. So, uh, there's a number of problems that need to be solved, and one of them is just this shortage. So uh, Medicaid and Medicare, the hospitals all are feeling this. And um, what he decided to do along with them is find a way to enable mid-levels and nurses, nurse practitioners, the ability to manage these heart failure patients and to manage uh, cardiac, cardiovascular disease. And so I met with him a few years ago. I was 100% on board. I've committed to him my own personal money and a lot of time and energy to help him grow and expand his, his project. So I've, I have been working a lot in real estate, which has been great. I've made a lot of money there and I continue to do so. But I've also put a lot of energy into this. And, you know, one of the reasons, and I told this story to quite a few people is, when I met Kevin, I went to an event with Grant Cardone. And the reason I went is I told myself, I want to go because I want to learn how to make a difference in the world. I want to be part of something that solves a real problem. And Kevin was who I was just randomly sat next to. And so it was just he and I connected on a high level very quickly. And from there, it's grown into a very good and, and great relationship. So, I mean, I hope that gives you a little bit of basis in history yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I like I always like to hear the backstory because yeah. it really defines your, you know, where you're coming from, why you do what you do, what your values and principles are, because that's always going to be important to the types of investors that you're going to attract. Yeah. In terms of, of you know, not just the money. I mean, obviously, they want to know what they're going to get the return on investment. Sure. I mean, that would be the case with anybody. But it, there's there's more factors to investing in something that's more than just that and that's they part of the story behind it and they can connect with that with their own values yeah. and principles and i have kind of the same approach to you as well because the money we're looking to raise is important obviously but it's something that we can get we're confident of that and i even personally can fill that need here in the next few months if it's necessary but primarily what we're looking for is the right person we need someone that can come on and actually fill a strategic role in helping us market and grow and expand this product and this service. So that's where it's like, I, I was excited to talk to you to kind of see kind of what your background is and what your reach is and, you know, what kind of roads that you could create to maybe not only help yourself in the opportunity, but the group as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah, I like to get a little bit more information about the, you know, what you're doing, but in terms of with myself, I'm, I'm, I'm also, I'm personally an angel investor myself. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm networked with some other investors, obviously, uh, that's why I do what I do. Great. Uh, my areas tend to be specialized around disruptive technology, okay. uh, health, health and wellness okay. is very important to me. I've been a, a wellness advocate now for 
oh god 20 plus years great uh, so i'm a big proponent i'm also co-owner of a startup uh that is actually called uh uh data pulse mm-hmm. but but it actually we produce an app called achu that can detect sickness in the body okay so uh, kind of like an algorithm that can kind of pick up certain things in the body in terms of like body temperature and mm-hmm. all these different things so that can. That, that, yeah. That's something that we can probably relate on because that's exactly what this system is. So what Dr. Kevin has done is he's created a software that is an AI system. Yep. And what he's done is giving uh, conditions in the body a mathematical value and has created algorithms for this software to not only monitor the vitals, but to take into consideration what these vitals are saying. So a good cardiologist, typically when they are treating a, uh, a heart failure patient, if they're monitoring the patient closely, they can tell when things are changing. So there's the adaptive and maladaptive state of the heart. So what happens is things change in the adrenals, and you probably are familiar with this with your system, is that they can see when the body's getting ready to adjust the heart because there's an issue. So typically, Dr. Kevin can say, hey, in about two weeks with what's going on, you're going to feel sick and want to go to the hospital. So what I can do now is I can treat these conditions with the proper medications to keep you out of that scenario and keep the heart in an adaptive state. So what this program that he's created, this software, which does it remotely, by the way, is that it can monitor those conditions and alert the nurse through you know the software and the, the the interface hey this patient's vitals are changing and this is what's going on so you need to adjust this and this and the nurse can just push a few buttons automatically sends a a, a note to the pharmacist and to the patient saying hey these medications need to be changed and this averts any issue with the patient feeling sick and showing up in the hospital Got and it. so uh, what he says is you know a, a, a nurse practitioner with very little cardiac uh, experience can get on this system, manage thousands of patients because the system only tells her about the sick ones. Everybody that's okay, they're just being managed. She'll get an alert or he, you know, depending on the practitioner, they'll be able to just take care of the patient. And in the meantime, it will also offer the the medical articles describing why we do this. And so looks like I lost you. Sorry about that, Jason. You went on. You're okay. Yeah. And so it not only, you know, manages the patient, but it also educates the nurse practitioner in the process and why these, these medications and these treatments are being, you know, the titration, the type of titration that's being done. Got it. Got it. And so and with this software, is it st- something that, that the patient uh, has to be on the premise? Like, nope. let, okay, it doesn't. Okay, got That's it. the whole purpose of this was to um, <clears throat> create a scenario where we can uh, remotely monitor these patients 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Got it. So we have uh, proprietary devices that we have prototypes in place now. Which so are then bio the device, bands. Is, is this something that they wear around their wrist? How yep. is it? Okay, got it. So, so there's many different devices, but right now what we've devised is a ring and a wrist, uh, right. something a bracelet. All right. So, all right. So this is interesting. Um, oh, it is. Um, <laughs> I mean, with my thing, what I would have to, what we'd have to do is obviously, uh, you know, see if there's any, you know, sound, well, it sounds like for what you're talking about, there's definitely some alignment here with what I'm doing with my, with, with this other company, my company that I'm mm-hmm. involved in. Uh, but of course we have to make sure there is alignment and, you know, I have to run this by the founder of the company. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so obviously there may be some NDAs in, in, in place, but, but nonetheless, I, you know, there, I think it could warrant, it definitely warrants another discussion mm-hmm. uh, since you're, since you're really focusing on the cardio aspect here, you know what I mean? So heart disease. Yeah, that's the biggest, that's the world he works in and that's the most expensive health problem the world sees right now. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so that's a way to be proactive and yeah. actually, but this does take into it. other takes in consideration, other conditions, diabetes, you know, there's a lot of conditions that affect the cardiac, the cardiovascular system. And so those are all figured into the system as well. Got it. But yeah, I, I, it seems like you could relate on the process that 
we're using. Um, but we're, we've been in operate. He's been operating the system for close to six years. Uh, we have all the clinical trials in place right now. We're just finishing a clinical trial where we're putting the actual AI up against a doctor and it's beating the doctor right now in, in the treatment. So it'd be interesting to see when that clinical trial is completed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that it would be interesting to kind of, uh, you know, see, you know, again, where there could be some synergy mm -hmm. here. Um, and obviously I have to make sure that I also have to, you know, protect, but at the very least I can maybe make some referrals, but I mean, mm -hmm. I think there, I like to approach to see where there might be some synergy yeah. with what you're doing. Uh, well, so now this algorithm, was this developed by Dr. The, the, the Kevin or, yep. okay. So that's the IP that we own is the actual algorithms and system. Yep. That's what we call the secret sauce and it yep. is patented and, uh, we've got yep. everything in place. Like it, the system's up and operating. We have many verticals within the business, and we could get into those details further down the road. Yeah, but it's off record. Uh, yeah. So, real quick, how much how much uh, uh, equity is in this project from him, yourself, and perhaps anybody else? So, right now, between he, I, and and individual investors, we're we're pushing three to four million. Okay. Um, and it's been bootstrapped and kind of drug along organically for many years, which, you know, is the best way to do it, in my opinion. Okay. But right now we're at this point to where we're looking at some massive expansion needs. So we need money for marketing, infrastructure, uh, support, as well as just finishing up some of these clinical trials and also FDA approvals on some yeah. of the, the wearables. So. So real quick, yeah, the wearables are, yeah, poor, like yeah. Fit, that type of thing. Um, so in terms of real quick, because, uh, you know, I yeah. always got to keep. We're almost done. And, and I could have uh, whoever your contact person was here that we can arrange uh, where they yeah. can, where you can get in touch with me. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, has anybody approached you right now in terms of either VCs or uh, yeah. any? other entities like bigger companies that are exploring interest in obviously i'm sure they're they're going to be yeah and I, I i'll i'll speak just briefly of it but dr and you don't Kevin, have to be name specific companies yeah I mean, so there's so just imagine the, the largest medical device companies in the world are very much in touch and aware and speaking with dr kevin regularly these are 30 plus billion dollar companies he's been approached by vcs they typically want way too much equity for the money they put in. It's not necessary. We don't need that much money. Um, and what our ask is, just so you know, is we're looking for $5 million And we can talk about the percentage of equity. But that equity would be in the actual prevail holding company, which supports five to six different verticals. So there's a lot of different business opportunities within that equity that can produce significant revenue. Got it. Down. All right, so let's do this. Um, I like if you could reach out to the person that you got connected that got sure. this on your end uh, to let them know I, I'm giving permission. Um, I'd like you to reach out to me on this because it's definitely of interest to see where there could be potential collaboration in this particular yeah. space. Uh, obviously, there there's a lot of traction also on the end of where I'm at in this particular thing. So the yeah. Other the fact that you already have, uh, you know, traction six years in three, mm -hmm. four million dollars into it, so to speak. Now looking to raise basically, you know, a little more than what you already have into it yeah. to expand it. Um, and it's good that obviously, you know, you're you've held off on any VCs getting involved early stage and dilute, obviously, all the effort that you put in, you know, at this point, so, you know. As you know, and I know, we, you know, we could be potentially sitting on a gold mine here, right? Okay, so Chris, <laughs> right there, it is a gold mine. I know what's going on in the background, and we can talk about that as we move forward. But it, yeah. it's going to be happening very soon. So absolutely, great. So have them reach out. Um, I, I, I don't there because people are watching. I can't give out my yeah, information. Because that's fine. Otherwise, I, I'll have everybody reaching out. And it's I, I love to help every, a lot of people, but I can't. Yeah, obviously one person I can't. <laughs> You're fine. Everybody was sending their, hey, can you give, you know. Yeah, so I can. with that being said, I'd like to have them put you in touch with me. Great. So that we can, uh, you know, set up a time to talk uh, offline. Great. Uh, I'd be glad to. Uh, so we'll go from there. Great. Okay. Thank you, Chris.
Jason, Appreciate thank you the so time. much for connecting to me today. Absolutely. My pleasure. You got it. Have a good one. Bye. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.